Hey guys, I'm Ashley. I'm Chris. And today we're gonna to talk to Beam 3D about their Prism resin printer on chip builds. So if you could give us a bit of a backstory on this printer and how you got to this point, that'd be really awesome. For sure. Uh, I mean, I joined Beam 3D and my main goal was to make an affordable, easy to use 3D printer. Um, that's not exactly the easiest thing to do. Uh, we had a long laundry list of problems that we wanted to fix and that was mainly how do users get involved and get printing quickly. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really cool spending a couple hundred bucks and just dealing with failure after failure after failure. Uh, so our number one priority was make an affordable printer, easy to use. Um, yeah, and I think we succeeded here. Yeah, I think it looks really awesome and I'm really excited to get one and try it out. So how many different prototypes did you get before you got to this final design? It was six. Wow, that's it was a lot. six. Uh, we posted a couple pictures on Kickstarter that showed the original. It was a big, ugly black box <laughs> with a green hood. It had a cut out piece of glass as the build plate. Um, it was pretty jerry-rigged. <laughs> um, we've gone through many iterations since, uh, moving from a metal design, going back to a plastic design and settling in somewhere in between which was key components are in plastic because they're easier to replace, easier to manufacture and get the mm -hmm. cost down, but have no structural integrity um, okay. in terms of affecting how the machine works and what it does. Uh, so that's how we were able to approach that price point of you know, 249 every day and deliver something that has more features than the Photon or really anyone else below $800. <laughs> Yeah, I think the price point is what really got me interested in this printer for sure. Mm -hmm. So your direct competitors would be Photon. Be the right? Photon, the EPAX, you know, some of the up and coming Kickstarter campaigns out there, mm -hmm. uh, even all the way up to the Frozen Shuffle. Uh, without obviously trying to compare us to the Frozen Shuffle because <laughs> yes. they probably have more weight in just the linear rails than I do in the entire machine. <laughs> wow. um, but performance wise, we match spec to spec. Okay, very cool. It's really awesome. Um, so can you tell me some of the key differences between FDM printing and resin printing? Because there's a lot of people out there who are like, you know, specifically a lot of people are printing miniatures, right, for mm -hmm. tabletop gaming. So there's tons of people out there who are like, oh, I can get those same results by using an Ender 3 and this specific, you know, mini profile. So if you can kind of show some of the differences or tell them. So, I mean, yes, it is possible to print something that small on an Ender 3. But realistically, let's look at time of production, right? right? It might take somebody a couple hours to print a single model on their FDM machine. And there are so many variables involved, who knows if they could do it back to back to back to back. Where on a resin printer, I can go ahead and line nine of these up on a single build plate. And an hour and a half later, I'm a happy camper. I have no visible layer lines. It is a matter of rinsing it off in alcohol, letting it dry, curing it, and priming it, ready to paint. Wow, that's really awesome. So you can do nine in the amount of time that an FDM printer can really do one. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. So if you could tell us some of the features about this printer, that'd be really cool. Some of the promotional materials make it look like it's a touch screen. Is that accurate? <laughs> uh, we get asked that a lot. Um, no, it's not. It is a color IPS screen, so it is really vibrant and it kind of <laughs> screams, poke me. Yeah. But it's actually a three button navigation. Okay. You know, up, down to select, left and right, and a middle button to select OK. A lot of people are always a little scared to back a Kickstarter printer. Yep. So like do you, what can you tell us to kind of put people's worries at ease about this specific Kickstarter printer? As a fellow consumer and someone who's involved within this space, I mean, even I'm hesitant of Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm very diligent about where I put my money mm -hmm. and we were cognizant of that. We wanted to ensure our printer was essentially ready for production with obvious few tweaks as we go, like, hey, the firmware could work better if we did this. It'd be nice if we changed the color of this or you know, right. applied that. But you know, our factory is geared up, ready to go. We wanted to ensure we'd hit our timelines in a nice 
short time frame, you know, and that's why we're targeting the July shipment dates. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to deliver a realistic promise, a affordable 3D printer that's super easy to use and delivers impeccable results and actually deliver it this year. <laughs> and I think that's always the issue, right? Yep. They're like, oh, it's coming. Oh, we got delayed. We got delayed. Our printers are stuck in China. They're stuck here, right? So that's really promising to hear. And that's really exciting to hear for sure. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And thank you, Chris, for coming out and talking to me about your Prism resin printer. Uh, so when does your Kickstarter actually end? It ends Friday, June 21st. All right. So you guys still have some time to go back it because it looks really awesome. And I think it's going to just blow the competition out of the water. Thanks, guys. Thank you.